All right, welcome to Newsline. If you've just joined in, let's get started, shall we? Now, effective people are not problem-minded. They're usually opportunity seekers, and they also turn every situation into an opportunity. Now, the broad objective of the National Youth Service Corps is to foster national unity, but it also aims to instill disciplined leadership skills among the Nigerian youth. And besides, the program provides an opportunity for graduates to gain work experience and contribute to national development. But the beautiful narrative emanating from Mitukiri revolves around what an NYSC member is actually doing with his time, space, and of course, the survival strategies he learned while in the orientation camp. And our correspondent, Mohammed Abubakar, shares this unique story with us on this line. 27 year old Ibi John from Donga local government area of Taraba State and a graduate of mass communication came to Borno State, Maiduguri in particular, on national assignment. To be precise, the one year mandatory national youth service graduates of tertiary institutions below the ages of 30 must undergo. No food for a lazy man is an African adage popularized by Nigerians. The message in that adage is seen here being practiced by co-member Ibi John, now on national assignment with the Maiduguri Zonal Network Center of the Nigerian Television Authority. Perhaps his background as a product of farming community back home, among other factors, motivated him to carefully study the expansive landscape of the Maiduguri Zonal Network Center to take farming that he knows very well to the next level by planting crops previously not cultivated anywhere in Maiduguri and its environs among those that are very common to mainly augment his little income as a core member. As we speak, some young ridges pregnant with tubers that are beginning to germinate are dotting the landscape of the network center. The young man behind this fantastic idea shared with the NTA his motivation. Even while we are, we are in camp, we are told to not only to depend on maybe government work even when we are employed, but to also get engaged in one entrepreneurship or the other. So when I came here, I saw that uh, there is availability of water here. And I saw people actually going into irrigation of several other things like onions and the rest. So I decided that let me go for uh, sweet potato and also yam irrigation because though I heard that there, there has never been idea of farming yam here, but I said let me give it a try because looking at the land, the land is a bit is fertile. When they see it yields good result, by next year they will also get engaged into yam farming irrigation. How has this idea supported him as a co-member against the current economic realities? Ever since I came here, almost every week I, I cook vegetables and I don't buy them. Even I, I actually uh, harvest them from my own farm where I planted them. So I have enough that I can even dash people. Mohammed Adamujia is the Borno State Coordinator of the NYC. I like to encourage those that are already doing well to keep the flag flying and continue in that same direction. And we encourage those that have not started to commence ways of making the host communities better than they met it. Fantastic, fantastic. That's the I can do spirit dominant in every Nigerian. But for Nigerian descent with dual nationality, it could also be it could be a crossroads deciding which country to represent at the highest level of sports engagements. But for those who chose to fly the green, white, green, it's sheer honor to bring glory to the motherland. Now this is the story of yet another Nigerian, 29 year old British born female boxer, Patricia Mbata. Patricia won the Olympic ticket for Nigeria against all odds. And the story is that her journey started interestingly in the same way training in the gym like the famous world champion, Anthony Joshua. Let's turn to gift George, who has the story for us. 
Time out called the clock. Oh, 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 there is the single shot. Though starting a sporting career in athletics, she ended up in boxing, personally sponsoring herself. This act made Nigerian boxing coaches take a gamble on her to feature at the last Africa Games in Ghana, just less than 10 years into her boxing career. And it was a risk worth taking as she won gold for Nigeria in the 75 kilogram category. I've got the uh, opportunity to box for England and also to box for Nigeria. But, um, you know, there's just nothing like representing the motherland. And when you're competing against everyone across the world and you're wearing the flag and you're meddling, it's just so close to my heart. Patricia, who now works as a project manager in a construction company in the UK, never had it smooth convincing her parents her passion for boxing. It was really difficult for her mother to come to terms with her boxing career. Having the best of both worlds is definitely key. There's definitely um, a change in strategy when I'm boxing in the UK and when I'm boxing in Africa. Patricia Mbata is an orthodox boxer with a little frame, but pushed into the 75 kilogram class by the Nigerian coaches. But she did not only win, but also entertain her spectators. So when we see the person in 75 kg in Nigeria, she's a very good uh, uh, boxer. That is why we push her to 81. So that one now, we push her to 81, we put uh, Patricia down to 75. The 81 now won a gold, and Patricia won a gold. That's so beautiful, right? So Patricia fit the 75, and I see that he's a good fighter. The gold medal at the Africa Games has created more hunger in Patricia to reach the pinnacle of sports, which is qualifying and flying the country's flag at the Olympics. It just means so much because next steps now is Olympic qualifiers, and just meddling here is just really important. How did Patricia get into the Nigerian boxing team without the usual trials? Patricia, wow. Train with my friend Emmanuel is irritated in England and uh, contact Emmanuel contacted me about Patricia and we put it together. And the first competition, she's so excited to represent Nigeria. She go hard. Her aim is to go to Olympics. Patricia, she's a, one of the best female boxers that we have in the country and try to do whatever she can to represent the country. This girl, she has been spending her money and our own money from our own pocket to represent Nigeria in a different competition. The Nigerian boxing team will be competing at the Olympic qualifiers in Thailand and hopefully Patricia and other boxers will get an Olympic ticket. Hopefully so and we wish them the best of luck. Let's take a first commercial break. Newsline will return in just a moment. Welcome back. Now, 50 is considered a significant milestone in the life of a person. It's a time when many people begin to reflect on their accomplishments, experiences, and of course, relationships. Now, the celebrant in our next story is an unassuming, humble, and generous personality, not only to members of his kindred, but also Christian faith, and others in the communities where he operates. He's referred to as Sound Prince by his numerous philanthropic gestures, and that earned him a papal recognition from Pope Francis at a special birthday Thanksgiving Mass at the Holy Family Catholic Church in Festec Town in Lagos. And I say more, here is Adiola Kamiya Kere with the rest of the story. The birthday Thanksgiving Mass in honor of Evangelist Paulino Sugochuku, alias Sound Prince, was one that spoke of appreciation and glad tidings as people from within and outside the country thronged the church to celebrate the man of the moment. In a homely, Reverend Father Jude de Mezue said Evangelist Paulinus has made Thanksgiving his lifestyle, listing some of his philanthropic gestures to include building of chapels where people can seek the face of God both in Lagos and his home state, Anambra. And that is his very today to build a private community, a private state, a private culture. Melodious tunes were not in short supply as the celebrant family and well wishes danced in thanksgiving to God. <laughs> Parish priests of Holy Family Catholic Church later presented the papal recognition to evangelist Paulinus Ugochuku. <laughs> a 
At a grand reception in his honor, it was heartwarming to see his kindred from Orifite, a number of state and business partners, ushering the golden evangelist into the venue where there was plenty to be refreshed with. Sound Prince, as he is popularly referred to, was eulogized in diverse words by family, business partners, employees, and friends. For God to have sustained him till this day, it means a lot. So, I wish him the very best in life. I have been with him in the past 31 years. We've done so many things together. Uh, he does not entertain fear as a human being. He believes in God wholeheartedly. He gives a lot to the society and that's what we expect some of these rich men to do. Riches that is from God goes with humility. So what I'm wishing him here today is that the Almighty God will bless his age. I wish him a, a, a very bright and rewarding future. And even 50 years will be like younger. Yes. He's a philanthropist that has, you know, invested in, especially in the youth. The celebrant whose life is an example of the scriptural verse, humble yourself and you will be exalted, was filled with praise and adoration to God for giving him the gift of life at 50. By the special grace of God. Now, you know, we enter into the second half of, the, uh, second half of any, any, any match, yeah. you improve. I, by the special grace of God, I pray that God God so kind and God so help me that we improve. I wish him long life and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Evangelist Paulinus had his early education and proceeded to Lagos where he joined trading as an apprentice and on completion worked hard to establish his own business. He veered into musical instrument business. The humble evangelist who produces Sound Prince product is now a household name in all religious centers amongst other institutions in Nigeria. All right, congratulations. And I, I, I should say that second half of every match is not always go the way he said there, especially if it's Chelsea. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, let's begin. The scriptures say he, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, and the groom shall receive favor from the Lord. So, in obedience, Toile Uchi Akume had to travel from the hilly north central crossing many rivers and creeks to the kingdom of Calabari in the Niger Delta in River State to find his wife, Nemi. Nemi is a daughter of the Briggs dynasty and Kenneth Nanim witnessed the colorful traditional wedding ceremony and the favor that immediately followed the groom. Traditional weddings differ from tribe to tribe. This time is happening at the family of a man who hails from Wanunel Taka in Benue State, Senator George Akume, the secretary to the government of the Federation. The Briggs family has given out their daughter in marriage to the Akumes, and they are here with their king to ensure payment of dowries and other traditional marriage rights are performed accordingly. <laughs> Everything done here has a cultural significance, including a variety of local dishes. Very appealing, I must say. The food I displayed, it shows that he can take care of our one. Two, it also signifies that their daughter cannot just batch into another man's house and start eating. We have been able to show her family and also the husband's family, the kind of food we eat, the kind of dresses we wear, the wrappers we take, and um, also for them to see the culture that the, that the girl must be brought in properly. At the appropriate time, if the wife dies at old age, we must take our daughter home. That is our culture and tradition. Of course, the Sawan get done has touched the atmosphere. I thank God and for the people of Tivland in Benway State to find a very hard-working lady to be 
a wife. I'm very proud. We are one Nigeria. And this is what unites us, marrying from different parts. Having performed the necessary rite, attention is shifted to the reception venue where the guests are already seated. <laughs> The business here is more of entertainment, merrymaking, whining and dining. With the guests feeding their eyes with different town steps from Benue and River States, the couple were not tired of dancing also. <laughs> Some of the guests also dropped a piece of advice for the couple. I'm sure this will bring more unity among Nigerians. They should have a blissful union, full of life, full of peace. And I wish them many more healthy, fruitful years. If they uh, learn to communicate well with each other, they'll have less problems. One last thing that must be done here is not the cutting of the cake, as many may assume, rather the cladding of the couple in the chief native attire by traditional leaders from that area, an indication of acceptance of the newlywed into the chief community. Beautiful, rich cultural heritage. Now you know where to go to when you're looking for a good wife. Let's break out now for some commercials. With total submission to the will of God, we bid farewell to our father, grandfather, husband, brother, and uncle, retired Brigadier General Yakubu Bin Kurnom Van Rimdan Ubangari Gani Wan, who died on Thursday, 28th March 2024, after a brief illness. The former commander of the elite 31st Airborne Brigade Makudi died at the age of 85. As part of the funeral program, a service of songs will hold on Friday, 26th April 2024 at his Tudunwada residence in Jos Plata State at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. On Saturday, 27th April 2024, the funeral procession will leave Nigerian Air Force Mortuary Jos to Pilgani in Langtang North local government area of Plata State for a funeral service and subsequent interment at the family compound. The late General Yakubu Om Van Rimdan, affectionately called Uncle Yaks, will be missed by many for his humble and cheerful disposition to life and selfless service to his community, which rewarded him with the chieftaincy title Ubangari Gani. He is survived by two wives, eight children, nine grandchildren, four siblings, and many relations. Fare thee well, Uncle Yaks, to resurrection morning. Signed, Barista Danjuma Rimdan, brother for the family. Thank you for staying on the line and you're watching Newsline. Now, there are some beliefs that are deeply rooted in our tradition and culture. Now, one of them is determining where to bury the re remains of loved ones. In some Nigerian cultures, for instance, it's required that those who die by drowning are buried by the riverbank. Now, the common reason is usually to appease the water spirits, ensure that the soul of the dead finds rest, and prevent it haunting the living. However, the controversy brewing in some communities in Anambra State around where to bury victims of a recent boat mishap involving popular movie actor John Poole, known as Jun Junior Pope, and four other crew members is raising the question whether such practice is still relevant today. And our correspondent, Benson Osadebe, finds out. River Niger, a natural creation that transverses the length and breadth of Nigeria, is today a subject of discussion owing to the sudden but tragic death of some Nollywood actors. Amongst them is Obunneme Odomodo, popularly known as Junior Poo. Although death has cut their lives short even in their prime, the stories suggesting they be buried by the river bank owing to the fact that they drowned in the river to avoid certain impediments has remained subject of controversy. It's part of the harmful policies that we'll talk about that needed to be yanked off from our society. Yeah. Those things are supposed to be overtaken by Christianity. 
But uh, you can see that since there, are, there is a freedom of worship, people still believe what they choose to believe. So they believe that water uh, has something to do with spirits, probably marine spirits. That's why they say that anybody that is drowned inside the river must be buried beside the river. I don't know where the blogger got that kind of information because it is non-existent. I'm from Anam. I'm a chief in Anam and uh, in my place we, we've never done such a thing. We've never, you know, we are a riverine community. Both mishaps used to happen. This is not the first time. Even last year, the Reverend Father died uh, of both, both mishap just along that Niger too. And um, there's nobody that has ever demanded that somebody be buried by the riverside. And there is nowhere you will find any, any, any tomb of, uh, you know, where somebody was buried. The question is, should this culture still be in the present day civilization? This traditionalist, chief from us, Asozo, is providing answers. So, the culture and tradition can only be reformed if there's any better way we can say, if somebody died, there's a way they do it. They will use a banana, uh, uh, that is the branch of banana or whatever, the stem of the banana to bury by the river, to call the person's name and bury it, and take the cops home. In all those things is reformation. Though the people's culture denoted has remained integral part of them, the need for its reformation against some harmful practices should be encouraged. <laughs> All right, thank you uh, for bringing those uh, information to us. Now, death is perceived to be more revolting when the victim is young and indeed a breadwinner. Now, the death of a young person often evokes strong emotions of sadness, anger, frustration, because, of course, they represent lost opportunities, dreams, and potential contributions to society. Two weeks ago, the news broke of a boat mishap in Anam, in Anambra State, in which some members of a movie crew going for a shoot drowned. Now, one of the victims was a young makeup artist, Abigail Frederick, from Akwai Bomb State. Now, she was the sole bread earner for her family and left behind an uncompleted family house. Now, her death was an irreparable loss and dashed the hopes of her family. But however, the state government has stepped in to bring succor to the family. And our correspondent, Sam, Kelvin Samuel, reports on a number of issues around the quiet life of the Frederick family in a quiet bomb state. Don't leave me the ball, no. Don't leave me the ball. I got three children. I'm going to raise them. On Wednesday, the 10th of April, 2024, just like any other day, young Abigail Frederick would probably have taken the wings of the morning in search of her proverbial daily bread, oblivious of the tragic event that occurred on that fateful day. <laughs> the sad event that claimed the lives of Nollywood actors sent an outpouring of emotions across the country and beyond. In Aquabum State, young Nollywood makeup artist Abigail Frederick was among those who couldn't make it out of the river alive. Her corpse was later buried by the river bank, and upon the news of the burial, Governor Moeno swiftly mobilized for a more decent funeral of the disease alongside putting measures in place for a better life for those she left behind. You're not just a uh, governor when people are celebrating. At times like this, you are their governor too, and you become the mourner in chief and come round, console them, give them hope, give them hope. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will perfect that hope in their lives. You know, it's most, most, most painful, I can tell you. We cannot leave them alone. Except things are not brought to my attention. There's no way we'll, under this kind of situation, a young child, a young girl, fending for herself, no, you know, I can't stand here to say we will do this, but I can all assure you 
that have spoken to the parents. We are here to give them soccer. We brought coffin, uh, we brought her back, and um, the, uh, the burial was conducted. Um, yeah, it was a sorrowful event, um, but again, um, at least she was buried decently. Well, we are very happy to have her. We got the governor with us. It's, it is now that we feel that our situation has been looked into. We are not alone in this. Already, the body of the late Abige had been exhumed from the river bank and accorded another burial rite in her hometown. Mechanisms have also been set in motion for the speedy actualization of the governor's promises to the family. The makeup artist who died alongside popular Nollywood actor Junior Pope was a graduate of Theatre Art, University of Uyo. All right, we are still within the Niger Delta, and this time the name Delta, by definition, and of course, and its name is synonymous with water. Now, the great rivers that empty in the Delta have played a significant role in the existence of the people uh, that reside within the area. And our correspondent has been wondering how those rivers have impacted the lifestyle, business, and beliefs of the people of the Niger Delta and decided to investigate. And this is what our correspondent brought back for Newsline. the way of the river. Only the people who are blessed with it around them will explain the many gifts of the river to their socio-economic lives. It is believed that river is the cradle of civilization as it provides a range of resources and services in every community. The geographical attributes and topography of Delta State made most of its communities river rain. Living in a part of uh, the river area, it has so many benefits to Deltans. The only thing that is there that some of the rivers, when it is it's too floody and the rain starts to fall, the flood overshadow a lot of things and they uh, spoil a lot of crops and uh, things planted by the people living there. With robust cultural heritage of Deltans from the north, central and south, the people enjoy this natural gift of water palpable in their lifestyle and spiritual beliefs. Some people still believe that they serve the water. They serve the water. Ogeame, that's the, the goddess of the river. They serve the water. They pour libation into the river, carry food, carry soft drinks. I don't want to mention any particular brand. You know, they pour them into the river and they believe that these gods, they answer them. Some who have been looking for children, go and also consult the god. Give me a child. I want a child. While we're growing up, you discover that as a little baby, six months, seven months, your mother will take you to the river area, to the shore, as she's washing her clothes, you know, in the basin. She will carry that baby and throw the baby into the river. The baby will be drowning, will go up, will come down, right? will pick her, shake the baby again, draw the baby again. That first is for you to conquer fear. Delta is blessed with the river Niger in areas bordering eastern Nigeria, as Saba being one of them is a gateway to one of the economic hubs of the nation. The Nigerian Post Authority in Wari is a harbor that provides safe and navigable channels for the nation. Rivers in the state have bolstered trade, sea transportation and recreational economy. There's nothing virtually you can do without water. Little wonder the current administration of um, President Tinubu brought the creativity of the blue economy. Offshore exploration is in the deep of the seas. You discover that the wealth of the state resides in water. While the river is a blessing to most businesses, too much of it is bad omen for farmers whose farm produce are incessantly damaged by excess flow of the river, like David O'Kerry. The river remains mysteriously unpredictable as the flow swings like a pendulum. It may be a good guest with these aquatic gifts or a bad guest that comes with a lot of troubles. <laughs> Apart from the troubles, I can tell you this for sure. If you find yourself 
anywhere within the Niger Delta. You will get to eat some short meal prepared with assorted seafood and mm, don't say I told you. Let's take a, a, a final break. We'll be right back. Now, our next story reminds me of a program, Is It True? It aired on one of our local channels way back in the early 1980s. Now, that was a philosophical program that interrogated some metaphysical and strange events that interacted with human existence. It was pre presented by um, Dr. C.S. Momo and Professor Kisi Ayao. So, is it true that a strange voice can lead a 40-year-old man to kill his mother? And is it true that he actually heard a strange voice telling him to kill his mother? Clement Barakwe unravels this strange but true story. Inyangake James Peter has spent almost all his life with his mother, Ma of young James Peter, in the family compound located in Ipeanang village, Itimepo local government area of Akwaibom state. At a time, his 70-year-old mother and widow would have been expecting the best of care from her son. Perhaps her reward for a nine-month pregnancy, kill her, kill her, is what he claims to have heard and he simply obliged by strangling his mother to death. There is no previous record of misunderstanding between the suspect and his mother. Neither is there any information about his mental health. A psychologist gives a lead into what could have gone wrong. This is what we call hallucination, and we see it as a false perception of object or event. He hears voices, he sees things that you do not see, he goes through the environment you are not going through. How possible is it for someone to hear strange voices? This is one of the questions I took to the streets of Uyo. It's normal for you to hear the re-calling of your name. Okay. Yes, that, that one is what shows that you are living. It comes from your subconscious, where you ask someone, did you call my name? I mean, it's totally strange. A lot of things are happening now, but I attribute it to something else. It's not normal. It's not normal. You cannot just hear voices and then you start acting on it. It's, I think it's relatively abnormal. Abnormal in the sense that not everybody, you know, hears voices and then acts on those voices. While the suspect is cooling off in the police net awaiting further investigations, Mr. Asi has this advice. He's not taking the guy to jail mm. that matters. They should find out how is he living, how is his life right from the beginning, mm. right from cradle. Was it be beginning to develop tantrum and they were looking down on it? All these things at the end of the day, a resolve in violence that would take life. Inyangake is not in the police custody alone. Another suspect, one Solomon Isaac of Ikorobong Sit in Insurubom local government area is also cooling off in police for murdering his son last year due to a family misunderstanding. While promising discreet investigations, the police authorities in Akwaibom State are worried that cases of some family members killing their biological relations are rising. Strange but true. We have just enough time to say our closing remarks. But let me apologize. We are unable to accommodate the update from C community uh, because we promote it in when we started. Hopefully, we should be able to accommodate it next week. I'd like to say Many thanks to all of you, especially you watching. Uh, thank you to all the Newsline crew from across the country. And of course, uh, don't forget to say hello to someone. So, on behalf of my production crew, I am Claire Adila Abdul Razak saying good night. <laughs>